Hello again. Um, now, in the last video where we left off, I said we should go ahead and find BB. So I've gone ahead to take the liberty to um, solve that here. I could just walk through the procedure of what I did. So what I did was to multiply both sides. I found the LCM of 5, 4, and 8. Multiply the left and right hand sides by 40. This right hand side is obviously still equal to 0. Okay, so that's still equal to 0. On the left hand side, 5 goes into 40, we have 8. So we have 8 VB minus 8 times 10 minus 80. Plus 4 goes into 40 10 times. So 10 times VB, you have 10 VB plus 4 times 10. So we end up with 40. 8 goes into 40 5 times. So we left, we're left with 5 VB. So that's equal to 0. So that gives us 8 plus 10 plus 5, 23 VB being equal to minus 80 minus 40 is minus 40. Take it to the right hand side, you end up with 40. Okay, so we find our VB being equal to 40 over 23 volts, which is equal to 1.7391 volts. Now, we have found VB, but that is not the, that's not, not actually what we are told to find. We are told to find IP. IP is the current coming downwards. Now, if you remember well, IP is actually this that we had over here. This term is actually our IP because that was the current that was coming downwards. So it's the um, voltage at this node minus the voltage at this node divided by this resistance. In other words, it's the potential difference across the um, 8 ohm resistor divided by 8 ohms. Okay, so we could go ahead and just um, find that solution now. So we can find our IP as being equal to VB over 8, which is equal to 1.739 that we got earlier divided by 8 and that gives us 0 0.2174 thereabouts um, amperes okay 0 0.2174 amperes let's check what, what do we get with, me with mesh analysis ah same thing 0 0.217 amperes what did we get with branch current analysis 0 0.2174 good so we know we are correct okay you should get the same thing with every single method. You should get the same answer with every single method. So let's go to the fourth method. The fourth method. Now, this method is called the superposition method. Superposition method. And what this method simply says is that if you have, okay, so in this, the problem we were told to find, or we were told to find, is to find the current in here which is IP, current going downwards, that's what we are told to find. So that's IP, that's our problem. Now, in order to find IP, um, superposition method simply says what you want to do is use one source at a time and find your solution or solve your problem based on one source at a time. When you are done, add all your solutions together. So let me explain that. With this particular example, with superposition method, what we're going to do is, first of all, we will put the 10 volt supply in the circuit, but we remove the 4 volt supply from the circuit. So we assume this 4 volt supply does not exist at all. We we'll take it away from the circuit and connect the circuit with only one source, which is the 10 volt supply. Now, based on this single source, we find IP. So let's call that IP 10 volts. Okay. So we find IP 10 volts, which is the IP due to 10 volts alone. Note that the 4 volt supply was removed for the circuit before we found this IP 10 volts. When we are done, we now remove this 10 volt supply from the circuit. Now we introduce the 4 volt supply into the circuit and we find the new current that, were, that, um, that exists. Okay, So let's say we now find IP 4 volts. So this is the IP that is due to this, this source alone, okay? Now we are finding the IP that is due to this 4 volts supply alone. When we are done with this, then superposition method simply says our solution IP is simply equal to IP 10 volts plus IP 4 volts, okay? That's what the superposition method says. So what we're going to do with superposition method is to use one source at a time. Now, some points you want to note with superposition method. If you are removing a voltage source, you short circuit a 
if you want to remove a voltage source, you short circuit the voltage source. So we remove the voltage source from circuit and we close the circuit in place of that voltage source. I will, I will illustrate that later on. So you short circuit um, voltage sources. But you open circuit current sources. Okay, so we shut voltage sources, but we open current sources. We shut voltage sources, but we open current sources. Okay, so let's actually now go ahead and solve this um, question that we're given. In order to solve this question, we are supposed to take one source at a time. Okay, so we're supposed to use one source at a time. Um, okay, so let's see if I could do this. So we want to use one source at a time. Let me try to scroll down just a little bit. Um, okay, so I copied this earlier on. So what we're going to now do is I need to remove one of the sources and find um, the and go ahead and find the um, IP due to that. So let's remove this um, four volt um, source. Okay, so I'll go ahead and remove the four volt source at present. Let's just remove this. But we said that when you remove a voltage source, you don't just remove a voltage source, you shut voltage sources, okay? So now we've removed the uh, voltage source, but then we need to shut that, we need to close that circuit off, okay? So now we need to close that circuit off. So let us close this circuit off. So that is the way you remove a voltage source. You remove the voltage source, but close off the circuit. If it were a current source, you leave it open. You do not close the circuit. You leave the circuit open. After removing the voltage source, just leave the lines unconnected. Okay? So, um, now we want to find IP. Since we have just a 10 volt source, this current will no longer be IP, but it will be IP 10 volts. Okay? So, let's find IP 10 volts. Now, you can use any method to find this IP 10 volts, but the easiest method will be to use the nodal analysis. So let's go ahead and call this, this was our node B. We know that the voltage at this point here will be 10 volts. Now, the voltage at this point here, if you want, you could pause the video and analyze it. What would be the voltage at this point? Okay, remember the voltage at this point, this is our reference here, G. So since it is our reference, the voltage there is zero volts. Now, there is no component between this node G and this node here, which was our node C. Therefore, this node is also zero volts, okay? This node is also zero volts. So now we can write our KCL equation for this circuit over here. And we have VB minus 10 volts divided by 5. That's the current going out in this direction. Next, I'll write the current going in this direction, which is plus VB minus 0 over 4. Then I'll write the current going down in this direction, plus VB minus 0 over 8. And this sum is equal to 0. Okay. So once again, the LCM is 40. So I'll go ahead and um, uh, multiply through by 40. So if you multiply everything by, through by 40, you end up with 8VB minus 80 plus 10VB. plus 5VB is equal to 0. We can take 80 to the right hand side. We end up with 23VB is equal to 80. And that gives us that VB is equal to 80 divided by 23. Okay? So if we have 80 divided by 23. That gives us um, an answer of 3.3. 4783. So that is equal to 3.4783 volts. Okay, so that gives us so based on this, that means that our IP 10 volts is equal to 3.4783 divided by 8. Okay, remember that this term here re represents our IP. Okay, so we do this computation and that um, gives us that okay so that gives us our IP um, 
that gives us our IP as our IP 10V as simply being equal to 0 0.43478 amperes. Take note the polarity is positive. Okay, so we'll keep this and now let's go ahead and find IP 4V. Okay, so we want to find IP 4V. So that's our circuit once again. Now, what we want to do is to take out um, the 10 volt source this time. Okay, so we want to take out the 10 volt source from the circuit so that we leave only the um, 4 volt power supply in this circuit. 4 volt voltage source in the circuit. So we've removed the 10 volt um, source, we've um, closed that circuit. Now we want to find our IP. Okay, so we want to find, find our IP V4. Let me just write that down here. IP 4 volts. Okay, so once again, this is our node B. So this point here, the voltage B, VB, we know the voltage at this point will be minus 4 volts. Minus because we had 0 down here, 0 volts down here. Go across the, go against the voltage source and we end up with minus 4 volts over there. Since this is voltage 0 volts and there is no component here, this point we also have zero volts okay so we could write our kcl equation as vb um, so the current going in this direction would be vb minus zero over five plus current going in that direction now will be vb plus four divided by four that's vb minus minus four divided by four ohms then the current going downwards now, which is your IPv4 plus VB minus 0 over 8. Okay, and that's equal to 0. So I'll quickly um, multiply through by um, 40. If I go ahead and mul multiply through by 40, I end up with 8VB plus 10VB plus 40 um, plus 5VB. Is equal to zero we have 40 on this side let me take it to the right hand side that gives us 23 vb is equal to minus 40 and that tells us that vb is equal to um, minus 40 over 23 which is minus 1.7391 okay minus 1.7391 so based on this we can find our ip 4v as being equal to minus 1.7391 divided by 8 ohms and that gives us um, our answer okay so that gives us our answer as negative 0 0.21739 amperes take note of the current this is negative okay now we we specify that our current is ipv4 we selected it as going downwards so this being negative suggests the actual ipv4 goes upwards but that doesn't really matter for now so according to superposition theorem remember that ip is now equal to ip 10v plus ip 4v and this is equal to, for IP10V, we had 0.43478. So we had 0.43478 amperes. And for IP4V, we had minus 0.21739 amperes. So if you go ahead and do this subtraction, you end up with 0 0.2174 thereabouts amperes okay 0 0.2174 amperes being our ip now once again we could go ahead and check what did we get with using nodal analysis nodal analysis we got our ip as 0 0.2174 same value mesh analysis we got the same answer 0 0.217 um, branch current method same answer 0 0.2174 so we have seen four different methods and we've also seen that whichever method you choose you arrive at exactly the same answer thank you